Hey friends, welcome to Worship with First United Methodist Church. The church is on the move for Christ here in Winchester, Frederick County, Virginia. My name is Sean Devilites. I'm the pastor here at First. And on behalf of our whole church, we're so grateful you could join us for worship today. A couple things I want you to know. First, know that we are pre-recorded. So you're going to see us in different places and different spaces throughout the service. And it's a good opportunity to know, uh, you know, we have a lot of sacred places that we're worshiping from this morning. That's a gift. You also see different people that make up the life of our church, and we're grateful for that as well. We also want to ask you and invite you to like, comment, or share on the video, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube or Zoom. Let us know where you're worshiping from, because that's a great way for us to see all the ways the Spirit is moving and bringing us together at this time. With that, we're so excited for worship today, and thanks for joining us. So glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound. Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound. Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound. Stacy Stickley, and I'm going to be reading the scripture this morning. Our passage comes from Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 through 30. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he offered the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God.
Morning, friends. Welcome again to Worship with First UMC. If you miss it at the beginning, my name is Sean Develites. I'm the pastor here at First. And today we are continuing a worship series called Be Our Guest. We are talking about hospitality, what it is and how we can model it as Christians. And over the past few weeks, we've talked about what it means to show hospitality when people show up unexpectedly and when we invite them. And also the way that children do a really good job of modeling what it means to be hospitable. This week, we hear about what it means to model hospitality through the ways we sustain one another and how what we are offering to people is just as important as the act of hospitality and offering itself. Let's pray. Oh Lord, open my eyes that I may see the needs of others. Open my ears that I may hear their cries. Open my heart so that they need not be without succor. Let me not be afraid to defend the weak because of the anger of the strong, nor afraid to defend the poor because of the anger of the rich. Show me where love and hope and faith are needed and use us to bring them to those places and to open our eyes and our ears that we may this coming day be able to do some work of peace for thee. Amen. What's your favorite food? Some of us might answer that question pretty quickly. Might think pizza, or tacos, or mac and cheese, or burgers. Others of us might want some more context. Where exactly is this meal supposed to be happening? Am I celebrating something? Am I really hungry? Or am I just kind of hungry? Do I really have to pick just one? Of course not, you don't. Whatever your answer might be, and however many answers you might have to that question, we know that what we eat gives some insight into what makes us unique. And that's why you might have heard this question before as an icebreaker at work or somewhere in school. For me, one of my favorite foods is this thing called Spanakopita. And you probably noticed I said one of my favorite foods, not just one favorite food. The Spanakopita is a Greek dish. You may have heard of it one year at the festival here in Winchester that takes place at the Greek Orthodox Church. It's basically a mix of spinach, some feta cheese in there, and this stuff called phyllo dough, which is this really thin dough. And this comes because my dad's side of the family is Greek. My mom learned how to make it, and so it's one of those things that is just nostalgic for me, and I just really like, I really like the food. So if I ever receive that food as part of a dish or part of a meal, I know the person making it cares about me in some way, especially if it's been prepped at home. It means something special. You probably feel the same way about the dishes that you're thinking of this morning. And for as important as showing hospitality is, like inviting someone to dinner in the first place, you might think about how that meaning is enhanced when you can tell that person really cares about you and really knows you. And the space that they welcome you into is one that they prepared something special for you. This morning we hear about something that Jesus did that was very special and a very sacred space that he invited the disciples into. And that's this meal that we've come to know as the Last Supper. Typically, we hear this passage during the season of Lent, which leads up to Easter. Or we hear it alluded to during the readings during communion, when we used to do that in person. Jesus is sharing in the Passover meal. And Passover is this Jewish holiday where they remember the night before the Hebrew people were freed from oppression in Egypt. And Jesus just told the disciples, right before he does what we heard in our passage, that one of the disciples, one of Jesus' closest followers who had spent years in ministry with him, would betray him. So that, that's a lot going on here in this moment, here in this meal. And that itself would be difficult news for anyone there to digest. But it makes the symbolism of the Last Supper all the more meaningful. You know the story, I'm sure. Jesus takes a loaf, he blesses it, he breaks it, and he gives it to the disciples and says, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Those four actions, the taking, the blessing, the breaking, and the giving, they're the acts and they're the words that the person who is leading the Passover meal, the person who would be leading a meal for Israelite culture, would, would share. So Jesus is drawing this very clear parallel from what was celebrated before to what is happening right now. What was meaningful before 
what was nostalgic in some ways, brings the disciples together in this moment. And we know likewise after the supper was over, he does the same with the cup. Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, of the promise that God had made before, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Now, as you think about this in the context of hospitality, I want to encourage us to think about who is sitting at the table where Jesus is sharing this meal. Amid the disciples, you have folks who are tax collectors. You have fishermen. You have people known as zealots, which means they're just really, really passionate, almost uncontrollably so, about their views, about what they think is best for their people, what they think is best for trying to get out from being oppressed by the Roman Empire. These are different lives, different people, different views. One person is bringing them together. That's Jesus. And as you think about that in the story, it's easy for us, as we think about it in the past, that we know no one at that table is perfect except Jesus. As far as the disciples are concerned, each of them falls short on their own. All are in need of what Jesus is offering them. And Jesus knows them so well that he knows exactly what they need to be comforted, to be made whole. It's bread and the juice that represents communion, something that we remember still today, even when we haven't been in person for a while to celebrate it. In a way, it's kind of like those foods that comfort us, those favorite foods we have. I know that on some of my lower days, one of the things that Katie does to, to show me care, my wife, is she makes a dish that I like, something that, that touches my heart in a way that comforts me because she knows me that well. She knows how to speak to me in ways that somehow words don't always reach, but someone caring, someone loving can do through offering a meal, through their hospitality. I'm sure you've had similar experiences. Sometimes it's a parent that makes that meal. It might be a spouse or a partner. It might be a friend that says, hey, we're going to go out and get this tonight. We're going to go out and get Chipotle, or we're going to go out and get a burger somewhere. Those, those actions that people take that show it's not just the fact they invited you into something. It's also what they're offering to you in that space. Jesus is giving the disciples what they need. And along with the actual sustenance, along with the, the nourishment that comes with that meal, the other thing the disciples are getting is grace. And that's something that God offers us each and every day as well. This day, this Sunday, is known, at least in the United Methodist Church, as World Communion Sunday. And though we're not able to celebrate communion together today in, in the act, we can still remember what it means. That somehow, some way, our God brings all of us to a table from our different backgrounds, our different experiences, our different views about how exactly community is supposed to look and still brings us together and reminds us that we are loved and that we need Jesus. We need Jesus. God invites us into that space and you can hear it we, we, in, in our church, we have liturgy or words that are written very specifically to remind us of that. That Christ our Lord invites to his table, it's not ours, all who love him and who earnestly repent of their sin, of the ways they've grown away from God, of the things that we sometimes allow to get in the way of our relationship with God and what God would want us to do. And as part of this communion practice, the sacrament, we confess that we fall short, that we need God, and that God is the one who offers us something that no one else can. Grace. Do you think about that in the context of the world that we live in right now? Think about all the different people that are around you, whether it's physically today, whether it's at your work, 
through the computer of Zoom at school and, and in your community, through Facebook. Some of us are, are watching this service and participating in worship through that very place right now. We live in a time where it's really easy to focus on the things that pull us apart. Where it's really easy to forget that, that God knows that we're different. And what God asks of us is to know that by ourselves, we can't make the world the best that it can be. We need each other, and we need God. We're made to be in community with one another. So what are we offering people when we invite them into our spaces? What is it that we're fixing for them? Are we trying to feed them something that will comfort them? Are we trying to feed them news and encouragement and hope? Or do we no longer care what it is that we feed some folks? Are we no longer concerned about how God loves them as much as God loves us? You might be thinking, well, Sean, that, that's really hard because there are some people that say some things and I ain't cool with the things that they're saying and I don't really understand how they can even pretend to be in the same realm of thought that I am in. I hear you. I do. And that's a challenge that we have. That in the midst of the words and the actions that people around us, that leaders around us demonstrate, we're reminded that we as Christians are supposed to be different. And that at no point in our work are we to stop caring about God's people. That's what's so important when we think about communion, that Jesus took people, a group of disciples, that though they worked together, probably didn't get along all the time. They challenged one another. They had different points of views and different perspectives of what God's justice looked like in this world, just like you and I might do today. Yet God still brought them to the same table. God still reminded them that they were welcome, that they were loved, and that they need each other, and they need God. What are we offering to the people that we meet today? Fun thing that you may not know yet about what our church is doing to offer to those in need. Uh, in the coming days, we're having a meeting to officially decide that we're looking to open our fellowship hall up to an organization in our community known as the Winchester Area Temporary Thermal Shelter. We know as that we're getting ready to move out of our building as it is up for sale, that it is a place that people who do not have a shelter, who do not have a home, that it can be a sanctuary for them in the coming weeks. This temporary thermal shelter, we know them as Watts here in the local area. Make sure that people have shelter during the winter months, from November usually to March. That there is a place for them to sleep that is warm and that is safe. That's something that you are a part of by being a part of our church. That's one of the ways that we can show that we're not just saying, come be with us. But we're saying we know and see that you have a need. And we want to help show that we care about the needs that you have. It's powerful stuff. It reminds us that there's something to be hopeful for in this world. There's good work that God is doing that we get to be a part of. There are people that we have an opportunity to comfort. And so the feeling we get from that, the, the, the presence of mind that we might possibly actually be doing something that God wants us to do, we don't have to only think of it then. Part of the, one of the hard things for us who have been a part of the church world for so long is the fact that we haven't been able to be together in the same ways that we used to be. And however many ways we come up with how to be together now, it still looks different and feels different than it used to be. But friends, that communion... While it is a blessed sacrament that we have an opportunity to participate in and that we can't wait to do again, it's not only when we come to church. On this World Communion Sunday, can you remember that you have the opportunity to welcome everyone in this world? You have an opportunity to join them at a table. That we as Christians have a responsibility 
to make sure that no one gets kept from that table. That no one is dismissed from it out hand, that no one is yelled at, talked down to, that there is no race that is excluded or resented or objectified at this table. That's a table we share in no matter where we are in this world, no matter what day of the year that it is. That is what we can offer to those around us. Friends, this week, what will you offer people? Will it feed them? Will it comfort them? Can we share the good news that we all fall short and that God still loves us? Let's pray. God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks because you have brought us way too far to turn back now. That we know we make mistakes. That we know that some of us feel we've made mistakes already today. And yet we are not left to our own devices. You offer us grace. You offer us a relationship that gives us the opportunity to say we know we fall short. We know you have a better way for us. We want to be more like you. And so God, as we seek to follow you, to share in the love that you first share with us, to live in the grace that you offered us before we know it, we pray together. And we pray for the leaders of our community, our state, our nation, and our world. We commit ourselves to resisting evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves. We pray for peace. We pray that we have the courage to show this hospitality towards others. And that we have the courage to be anti-racist people until racism is finally gone from this world. We pray for first responders, for all those serving in roles providing care for others, for all those who teach and who learn whether they have a degree to show for it or not. We pray for those affected by disaster, both natural and man-made. We lift up those who use their voice to amplify the voice of others who are oppressed. We lift up all those serving away from home, those without homes, and all those who could not be with us today. We lift up those mentioned on our church prayer list, particularly Marlene Fisher, Andy Kaiser, and the family of Melvin Wine. We pause now to lift up others on our hearts and minds as well. God, is for all these people, each and every one of these persons that we give thanks to you and ask that you continue to bring us to the table together to remind us that no matter what our background, what our experience, or what we even know about you, that you have brought us to this table. And Lord, may you empower us, equip us, to transform us, that we might be willing to offer what you've given us to others in the ways that we do understand. As with that, we join together in the prayers that your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this point in our service that we get to worship together with our offering. And there's a couple different ways you can share your offering with us here at First UMC. First, you can go to our giving page on our website, and you'll see that link below. You can also mail in your offering to the church, and you'll see that address as well. Or you can drop it off at our North Braddock Street facility. Uh, but with all of those, we also want to invite you, if you have a different church home and you're sharing your time with us today, to set your offering aside for your home church because we know that we're all in ministry together in this world. 
if you do happen to choose to give to First United Methodist Church today, know that one of the things that you're offering goes to support is Watts. Uh, we've been friends with Watts and supporters of Watts for a long time. Uh, and the work that they do isn't just uh, the time they come and set up in one church or another. We happen to get to host them for a while this time if things go the way we hope they do. But know that they also have folks who come and volunteer. They have cops. They have different kind of resources that they want to make sure folks know that they are loved and cared for. And they provide space for about 36 people a night who otherwise wouldn't have a place to go. That's one of the many ministries that goes on here at First United Methodist Church. And one of the ministries that what you're about to do right now, your offering, goes to support and goes to help be the hands and feet of Christ here in Winchester and Frederick County. So with that, we're going to pause now for a musical offering. I invite you into space so you can pray over your offering. <laughs> time for our offertory prayer. Eternal God, we present our tithes and offerings to you now as a token of our love for you. We know that our financial giving is not the only thing you require. We remember your mandate to take your gospel to the whole world. We remember that you desire us to love you with all our hearts, our minds, and our souls. We remember that you told us to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Help us to measure up in our love and service. Amen. Friends, this concludes our worship service this morning, and we're so grateful that you chose to join us for worship today. A couple announcements before you go. First, you've heard it already in the service, but we have our meeting, uh, our charge conference, Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. via Zoom to approve leasing our fellowship hall space to Watts. So if you're interested in attending that, there'll be a Zoom link that comes out via email and you can sign up for that email here on our Facebook page. Also, we'll be having a charge conference on the 10th at 10.30 a.m., that's Saturday, so that we can approve our budget, our leadership, and pastoral compensation for the coming year. That's a regularly scheduled one. But those are two things that are going on that you can see what's in life of the church. Another that's coming up in a couple weeks on October 24th is gonna be our fall festival. We're looking to have a couple activities here at our APR pavilion that you'll hear more about later on. That's Apple Pie Ridge, in case you're not around here locally. But with that, with all the many things that are going on that are good, and all the many things that are going on that are challenging, we get to go. Go and know that you have good news, you have hope, you have life to offer to someone else. Go and offer that. In the name of God, our Creator, our Redeemer, and our Sustainer, Go in peace. Amen.